It's called Top Secret America, a Washington Post investigative series revealing an undercover U.S. national security operation, uh, perhaps too big, too big, way too big. It's raising serious concerns about whether the country is as safe as it should be. Joining us now to talk about that and much more, the former CIA officer Valerie Plain Wilson. Uh, the 2003 leaking of her identity sparked a huge national political firestorm that all of our viewers remember. Valerie is in Los Angeles right now promoting a new documentary in, entitled Countdown to Zero. We'll talk about that in a few moments. Valerie, thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Uh, it was a three-part series, very long, very detailed. The gist uh, said this in this article in the Washington Post. I'll read it to you. The top secret world the government created in response to the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001, has become so large, so unwieldy, so, and so secretive that no one knows how much money it costs, how many people it employs, how many programs exist within it, or exactly how many agencies do the same work. Uh, you've had a chance to review it. You agree with that assessment? The sad truth is, for those of us in the intelligence community who care about it, involved with it, this is not news. Uh, this is something that we have known since 9-11. It is so unwieldy and bureaucratic that uh, I am afraid that we are not as safe as we should be. Well, when you served as a clandestine officer in the CIA, you saw this explosion in the growth. How did it directly affect your work? Uh, it comes mostly in the uh, incredible growth of contractors. It's now uh, estimated that it's up to 60% of our intelligence budget, uh, which I find unbelievable that so much of our core intelligence functions have been outsourced. Uh, so it calls into question the loyalty. Uh, I mean, who, who are they loyal to? Is it to their government or to whomever is writing their paycheck? Uh, there is institutional knowledge that is at stake. And, uh, and it's the article, the whole series points out very well, no one really has a grip on uh, what, who is reporting on what. There is a, a heavy repetition. And uh, it's, I, I believe that my former uh, CIA colleagues feel, as everyone in the intelligence community feels this burden. Well, one of the criticisms before 9-11 was that the left hand of the U.S. intelligence community was not talking to the right hand of the U.S. intelligence community. The dialogue, the communication was terrible. Has that been repaired based on your inside information? I don't think it has to the extent that it needs to be. In uh, the aftermath of 9-11, the 9-11 Commission, I think in what was a knee-jerk reaction, More, it does not make our intelligence gathering more effective. Should they get rid of that job, the director of national intelligence, who's supposed to coordinate and oversee these 16 separate intelligence gathering operations? Well, as you know, in, the CIA was formed in the aftermath of the attack on Pearl Harbor because it would centralize intelligence and so that we would not have a surprise attack like that again. Uh, we've, it, 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 what's happened with the DNI, he has neither uh, the legal uh, authority nor the uh, real responsibility to shape up what needs to happen. Let me pick your brain on a couple of espionage stories that have surfaced over these past few weeks. This Iranian scientist who supposedly was on the U.S. payroll came over here, gave the CIA a lot of inside information, but now has gone back. In recent days, the Iranians are saying, you know what, he was always a double agent. We wanted him to come here pick the brains of the CIA, tell us what he could learn, and now he's back in Tehran. What do you make of that charge? It is, I, there are either, there's two possibilities. One, that he was a plant from the beginning, or that he, uh, you know, lost heart and decided to go back. Um, neither scenario sh is uh, a good one for us. I find it very strange. Uh, how would he have done this uh, internet uh, video where he says he was abducted and uh, you know is being held against his will. How did he manage to post that video? There is a lot of questions there, um, uh, and none of them are good news for U.S. intelligence, particularly on Iran, which he maybe he had just a little bit, uh, and we got overexcited. Um, but uh, if you recall what happened to Saddam Hussein's son-in-law, who defected, went to Jordan, 
told us uh, a lot about the then Iraqi nuclear weapons program and went back and was kissed on both cheeks by Saddam Hussein and then summarily executed. Yeah, we'll see what happens to this Iranian scientist in the coming weeks and months. Uh, this Russian spy swap, uh, was that a good idea, a bad idea? You, you know some of the details. Anna Chapman, uh, that uh, lovely uh, redhead who was part of that Russian espionage ring in the United States. Everyone always talks about the cute redhead, first off. Um, uh, I was uh, taken with how the speed in which a swap occurred. Uh, clearly, the FBI had been uh, following this for a decade, so they were prepared for this possibility. I was uh, taken with the fact that they didn't seem to be uh, reporting on anything of much value. Uh, my, this is just my speculation. It, maybe it was a program that started under the Cold War before the Internet era. Uh, and through bureaucratic inertia, it's continued on. Because it seemed that what they were giving their Russian handlers was things that a couple clicks and you know a Google search would have provided with. They put a lot of effort into this and not getting a whole lot of bang for their buck. I know you're in L.A. to promote Countdown to Zero, this new documentary that uh, is trying to get everyone to do away with their nuclear arsenals. Is that realistic anytime soon, given the reliance that so many of these countries, whether the U.S. and Russia or China or some of the other countries have? Um, I think it is realistic, and all of us that have worked on this, uh, it comes from the same producing team that did an Inconvenient Truth. We wouldn't do it if we didn't think that we could, in fact, veer off this path. I don't think it'll be anytime soon. Uh, but no one has expectations that we will do this unilaterally. It must be done uh, very thoughtfully in a disciplined fashion where uh, you set up there and there, there's a set plan that we will go through to ultimately get to zero. I think you need to have that as your ultimate objective. And it's getting good reviews, Countdown to Zero, this new documentary. Uh, there's another movie, by the way, and very quickly coming out in November, that's gonna be uh, the movie of your own uh, book, uh, Fair Game. Uh, Naomi Watts plays you, Sean Penn plays your husband, Joe Wilson, the former U.S. diplomat. Uh, it's uh, obviously uh, something you're looking forward to, right? It is. It's. Uh, the most surreal thing, uh, but uh, it's a very powerfully told story. Uh, Naomi and Sean do, a be of course, beautiful jobs, and it's an important piece of our history. We'll look forward to that uh, as well. Please come back. Uh, Valerie Plame Wilson, thanks very much. Thank you for having me.